Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. So today I'm going to be going over uh, the things I've learned in the last few days about the Wulu sensor while doing some testing on it. Uh, but first, before we get started, I want to thank John from South Carolina for sending this out so we could do some testing on it and uh, do a review on it. Uh, so I want to thank you for that. And uh, then we'll go ahead and I'm going to do an unboxing right here. You guys can watch just to show you what's in the package. And then I'll just go over and uh, the sensitivity and uh, what I've learned about it and what I think of it. Okay, so now that you've seen it unbox, uh, let's talk about uh, just the, my general opinion of the sensor now after using it for a few days. I would not use it as your primary day-night sensor uh, for a couple of reasons. One of them is, the main one is that, like the guard line sensor, it has problems with false alarms. I've consistently, uh, I've got them all adjusted, I've adjusted them so they're on the second from the least sensitive setting and uh, I've gotten really good results with that compared to what I was doing on maximum sensitivity. But I still, I actually I have trouble detecting a certain Honda vehicle, which I've brought through here a few times. Uh, it's the, the skin on the car is just too cold and it actually doesn't pick it up. So on maximum sensitivity, it does pick it up, but on what I have it on now, which is second from least, it won't pick it up. But I'm still getting false alarms from whatever source. I'm not sure if it's birds or if it's the moving trees. The moving trees definitely... Uh, helps add to that. And um, on top of that, that problem I've seen with it, the receiver unit doesn't have uh, the audio output and mainly doesn't have an external relay for me to connect to a video system, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the alarm, it's, the alarm itself, I mean, it works quite well. Uh, I was actually, I was pleasantly surprised with how well it did work uh, as far as, you know, actual functionality and how well it integrates together and as far as a daytime alarm, alarm to alert you of movements uh, you know around the property or in and out of the property or even at night uh, it does work but I would definitely I would not I would not rely on the alarm as your only system uh, to alert you to a problem okay so now about that I mentioned the camera system and the external relay so if you have alarms around and especially at night but anytime really uh, you really need to have a camera uh, like a CCTV, like a security camera, something there where you can see it in your, in your house or wherever you're located. If the sensor is away from you, so you can't have a direct line of sight between you and the sensor, you really need to have a video, uh, uh, a picture streamed back to the house of what that sensor is seeing. So you have a camera on the sensor, so if Bugs Bunny sets the sensor off, you know it and it's not a serious problem. You need to know, you need to know what you need to address. If it's just a couple uh, local thugs out there or if it's, uh, if it's a, uh, like a full military assault in your facility, you need to know what it is so you can prepare for that uh, when you go out there to deal with the problem. So you really need to have a video system on it. And on top of that, the reason you need that external relay is because with many video systems, and this is actually really important and overlooked a lot of times, is they have a freezing function which will freeze the video screen for you so that uh, the 10 or 15 seconds, minute, whatever it takes you to get out of bed or get ready to, uh, to respond, you can look at that video screen and the image has frozen from when the alarm goes off so you can see that problem. Because that, that threat is going to be moving and it could very easily move into your, uh, your facility. Um, and you won't see it when you look at the camera and you won't know any better, so the camera won't do you any good. And you can use that external relay, like on the guard line, for example, uh, quite easily to do that. I have another video on how I did that. I'm going to put it right here. That was with the guard line. Uh, or right here, whichever. Uh, so that, that is a feature which I really wish it had. And that's why, I, uh, that's one of the big reasons why I, don't, I say you probably shouldn't use it as your primary alarm. Uh, but as a secondary alarm, uh, it, it works pretty well. Uh, so let's go over, I'm going to show you guys the sensitivity uh, on the setting I'm using now, which as I said is the least, uh, the second from the least, uh, least sensitive. And uh, the reason I have it there is because it's not so insensitive, it doesn't detect everything. It occasionally has problems with certain automobiles, as I mentioned earlier, but it consistently detects uh, anybody walking by and almost all vehicles that are driven by it. Uh, but it's low enough where my false alarm level is really low, uh, but there is still some false alarms with some sensors I have set up. Okay, let's take a look at that. 
Okay, I'm about 25 feet from the sensor, which is back behind where you're looking right now. And as you can see, uh, it has this period of three seconds that it waits before it sets the alarm off again, which may be a little short for some applications, uh, but it's pretty good. And you'll see here, I'll trigger it again if I move. Uh, when it resets, let's see. There we go. I find it to be more than three seconds. Uh, in practice, you saw there, it's closer to 10 seconds. Uh, so I'll say that again. When I do move, uh, it picks me up really no problem. If I move very slowly, and I'll show that uh, here in the next. So here I'm being stealthy and moving slowly at 25 feet uh, past the sensor. And it still picked me up no problem. Okay, so now I have a sensor right up here, uh, right to your right, uh, right side. And I'm going to be walking past it in front of it until the alarm goes off consistently. I'm going to tell you right now, I've uh, tried this before, and this alarm, uh, this sensor actually detects me a lot uh, closer. It's a lot less sensitive than the one on the uh, the previous one I showed you on the drive, uh, which is interesting. They are in the same sensitivity setting. I've adjusted them all the same. Oh, so I'll show you. I'm just walking by, and it's picked me up. I'll give it three seconds. And it didn't get me that time. Now I'll show you for consistency. Okay, so this is the consistent distance I found right here. Uh, and there we go. And this distance directly in front of the sensor is only about uh, 10 to 12 feet. Uh, so in this case, this sensor is only detecting about 10 to 12 feet on the second to the least sensitivity, which is curious, and it is under a different settings than the last sensor. Uh, it's both times it is overcast right now. Uh, in, in the last, uh, the last setting, uh, the last sensor did have trees as a background. Here we have an open background, uh, which is going to be uh, more neutral compared to the trees, which are uh, cooler, uh, and so that is going to all add to it and compound to it. So. What you have in the background, if I have a very cold background, for an example, uh, like wet trees, that is going to be a lot more contrast for me walking past it than, let's say, this background here, which is just grass and foliage. It's been worn by the sun, and uh, a lot, there's a lot of open space back here. Uh, so there's a lot of more warmth back here than in the last setting. So it's more difficult for the passive infrared sensor to pick me out. So that's something to consider as well. I'm guessing if I swap these sensors around, I would uh, get get the opposite result. So this, wherever sensor is here would be less sensitive than the one up there. Uh, so you can see this had a much less sensitivity than the last one. And at night, of course, this all changes as well. So there's a lot that goes into uh, how far they can detect. Okay, and I do want to mention that it did rain uh, today quite substantially. It didn't affect any of the sensors. Uh, I'm guessing while it was raining, uh, if we had driven a car past it or someone had walked past it, uh, the car would have been less sensitive because the rain cools the skin. And uh, uh, someone working like a human walking past it would have been more sensitive because the background was cooled. Uh, but, but you are still not really cooled by the rain. Uh, so that's my guess. Uh, as far as waterproofness, all the sensors turned out just fine. Uh, they're, they're well sealed against the elements, so that's not really, I don't think, going to be a problem at all. Uh, so rain, not really a concern. And as always, guys, uh, physical barriers such as razor wire are not obsolete in the 21st century and can definitely be put to good use uh, for your security measures. So definitely consider those as well. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the Wooloo uh, drive-away alarm. Once again, this is I had three sensors, uh, and thanks John for sending that out. I think I summarized pretty well at the beginning of the video uh, my overall, my, what I thought my opinion on the alarm. Uh, but once again, as I'll say, I don't think that uh, it's a good standby alarm. Honestly, even the guard line alarm, I don't think is a very good standby alarm because of its problems with consistency and false alarms. And I think this is going to be true from what I've, uh, from what I've read about them and what I've seen any of your motion detection alarms in the consumer market, they all use the same basic electronics, the same basic design, and it is definitely flawed. It's designed for indoor use. That's where it all the designs came from. Indoor motion detectors, this will give you 100% results, I'm sure, I haven't tried it, but I'm sure it will, uh, in an indoor setting, like in a store or something after hours, because there's nothing there to cause any movement, unlike out in nature, which requires a whole different uh, approach on things, and none of the alarm companies have really taken the steps to uh, to 
combat the problems they have with false alarms uh, in a natural environment. So that's something you're going to be suffering from with a lot of motion detectors. Uh, there are other technologies out there to look at, and maybe that's something we'll look at in the future. But uh, be sure to subscribe below, uh, like if you enjoyed the channel. Um, We'll have a lot more really interesting stuff coming up in the future. Uh, you'll probably definitely want to see. And uh, until then, I'll see you again later. Thanks for watching.